Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So looking at the global equity markets, today is apparently one of the last days for the Greek Parliament to work out a deal with their creditors. They got till the end of the day. Um, they've obviously got a, a payment to work out on the on the 30th of June. Uh, but today, they, or over the weekend, they gave their final proposals uh, for consideration. So this is going to be the final bit of um, negotiation to see if the deal can be reached. And uh, the markets have kind of reacted relatively positively to that. Um, that process, but obviously no deal uh, met yet, um, but still there's a hope that uh, an 11th hour deal can in fact be reached, uh, but I wouldn't be that massively surprised if there's still some impasse at the end of the day, but um, just as the closest we've ever been to actually something happening in the right direction. So the US 30 had a negative day on Friday, actually finishing at the bottom end of its range. Uh, it's had a positive start to today's session, but capped by potential resistance at 18,112. Moving on to the UK 100, uh, we actually gapped a lot higher this morning. European Boris is um, benefiting a lot from uh, from news about that, that Greece counter proposal, and uh, we look to be breaking through potential resistance at 67.71. We've almost got a bullish cross on the MACD, whereas the other technicals are relatively neutral. Apart from the slow stochastic, there is, looks like it, it did have a slight buy signal that was trading just below the 20% and is taking its head above there right now. We're at the top end of today's range, it's slowly just edging up ever, ever slightly higher. Obviously, if a Greece deal does come through, that will be positive for European equity markets. Otherwise, I expect some pressure to be added on there. Moving on to Japan 225, great start to the session as well. It's already currently trading the top end of its range, bounced off 20,087 quite nicely, targeting 28.68. But we really have to look at, have a look at dollar yen to get a flavour as to as to what's happening right there. Uh, Chinese stock markets are closed for um, local holidays, but they had had a terminalist uh, session last week. They were down about 13% in total, so uh, the APAC region is certainly uh, feeling a little bit of pain. What's quite interesting is that dollar yen is not really doing a huge amount, trading between two ranges, 121.87 to 124.42. Uh, and we look to be potentially capped by that 21 period SME on there as well. So not a huge amount happening on dollar yen, but Japan 225 nevertheless sticking up quite nicely. Perhaps I think there might have actually been a, a Bank of Japan session talking about the economy over there, uh, but we can talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. So West Texas crude not doing a huge amount, consolidating at 59.50. Um, with the US dollar not doing a huge amount either, it just seems to be kind of floating around, so there looks to be a potential pivot area. Technicals are flattening out, everything else is relatively neutral. Um, but we're, nevertheless, we're still trading above $60, with 64 being the long term potential resistance. Moving on to gold, um, gold is drifting a little bit lower uh, following Thursday's FOMC, where it uh, broke up a fair bit higher and is just slowly drifting down again. Wouldn't be surprised if the 55 period SMA provides a little bit of short term support, otherwise, 1186 as a level you want to be watching out for. So moving on to your dollar, um, uh, interesting couple of sessions considering the news about, uh, about Greece. This is our Friday candle and this is today's candle, not really doing a huge amount. Uh, it's actually probably worth us adding uh, at the tip of this candle in as a potential short term resistance at one spot 1475. Uh, arguably you do have a trend line from the bottom of this area up to the top like so. So this is a ascending triangle formation, usually a continuation pattern, which means the bias is for it to break through the top rather than break through the uh, the sloping trend line. Uh, but obviously that's, that's no guarantee, that's just the traditional technical analysis definition of it. Uh, obviously if we do break below this trend line right here, you'd be looking at one spot 11. Otherwise a break of one spot 1475 opens up one spot 1642. Technicals are okay, MACD not showing much, either as the RSI, but the slow stochastic there just about to head into overbought territory, but it's not quite there as of yet. And to finish up with GBP USD, um, people are talking about UK interest rates a little bit more excitedly at the moment. Uh, it still seems to be uh, a fair way off, but the way that cable is moving right now, people are obviously possessing themselves for, for something um, because there's a big difference between cable and a lot of other major FX pairs versus the US dollar. Um, but we seem to be struggling to break through one spot 59. Uh, should we do that 162.65? Uh, as a fair bit of distance away, but that's the next potential resistance. But we've had three times to bait through 159 um, in the last couple of sessions. It's not done it yet. Uh, and economic data-wise, well, we've got uh, Eurozone CPI, we've got existing home sales in the US. Fast forwarding on to Tuesday, we've got Chinese PMI, got a whole bunch of market serve data from Germany and the Eurozone. Uh, durable goods, that will be an interesting one for, uh, for the USD. 
and then on Wednesday, um, to be fair, most people are going to be talking about the Greek deal, which uh, apparently needs to get something needs to get thrashed out today. Uh, and if it doesn't, then uh, apparently by Tuesday it means that the Greek banks are going to be in potential financial difficulty, so they need to get something sorted out ASAP. Uh, so that's the bigger news. But on Wednesday you've got German IFO data and uh, US GDP, and that will obviously be a big one for uh, for dollar bills as well if they think interest rates is going to be. Uh, on the horizon anytime soon this year. So then you've obviously got your crude oil inventories due uh, on on Wednesday as well. So as ever, keep your eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your layout going forward. Uh, lots of cool analysis here from uh, from Michael Houston. He's been doing a lot of FX stuff uh, over the last couple of sessions. And he's already been on there this morning. And uh, join us again tomorrow to find out what happened next.